Now, when it comes to the Western Allied invasion of France in Normandy in 1944, quite some time is spent usually on discussing why the Germans did get the landing area wrong, namely assuming an invasion of Pas de Calais instead of Normandy. Yet I think we should take a more extended look at the whole situation. For this we need an expanded time frame and also look at the map that shows us on how many coastlines were still under Axis possessions even in May 1944. As you can see there was quite a lot of territory that needed to be covered. Now if we look at the situation in summer and fall 1943 there are several issues. First off, to make a proper defense you need concentrated troops at critical points. Yet the problem was that in mid-1943 it was not clear at which point the Allies would be attacking next. As a consequence basically everything had to be covered. Second, the control of the air and sea was getting weaker and weaker by each day. Thus an early warning about the potential invasion was also diminishing day by day for the Germans. Now of course somebody might argue but France was obvious because it was the direct route into the Reich. Well I have to disagree here for several reasons. First the direct route into the Reich would have been an invasion of Germany from the north or even the Baltic Sea. Something that was deemed unlikely but was still mentioned by the commander of the Kriegsmarine in his situation report to Hitler in March 1944. The weakness of the German base anti-landing and coastal defense must be taken into account. Even with a hostile landing here seems unlikely at the moment. The Führer notes that something will happen for the expansion at this soft spot when projects in the west are finished. Additionally probably the second most direct route would have been via Denmark. As also Hitler noted in his 51st directive for the war in early November 1943. But a major attack against Denmark is also possible. It is more difficult at sea and less effective to support from the air. But its political and operational effects are greatest when it succeeds. And there's another point with the direct approach argument because the allies usually didn't go for the direct approach. There was more a lack of a direct approach as I pointed out in my Italy first video. Although we generally talk about Germany first strategy, it was actually more an Italy first strategy. So if we look at the situation in fall 1943 from the German side, the Western Allies were not particularly known for going down the direct route. Yes, the US commanders wanted to attack Germany directly as soon as possible. For them, the operation Torch, the landings in North Africa and also Operation Husky, the landing in Sicily were seen as detours. But I doubt the US leadership sent the Germans a memo notifying them that they would prefer a direct approach, but that the British disagreed. And the British had good reasons for this. They argued very strongly for taking North Africa and Sicily, since they wanted to clear out the Mediterranean, which was also called the British artery, and also to kick out Italy out of the war. As such, the Germans in some cases assumed that the Western Allies would go for the weakest defended position first. Furthermore, although the invasion of Sicily and Italy were successful, there were many problems like delays and in case of the landing near Salerno, the German counterattack was almost successful. And in relation to that, Hitler noted in December 1943 the following. With regard to the Anglo-Saxon landing intentions in Western Europe, the Führer considered that there had been a considerable disillusionment on the English side as a result of the events following the landing in Italy. He was therefore not completely sure of their intention to land but expected landings on the Dutch and North and French coast in early 1944. So let's look at the map and you can see that the Axis forces still controlled areas from Norway down to the Spanish borders and Balkans. This is also a reminder that the Atlantic Isle was not just directed at some beaches in France but went from Norway to Denmark, Netherlands and it only ended in southern France. Now let's look at some specific parts here and for this we look at primary sources like entries from the war diaries and the briefing of the Wehrmacht to the political leaders from November 1943. Let's start in the north, as such Norway first. The total front line was estimated about 2500 kilometers, that is about 1550 miles and it is noted in parentheses that this is approximately the same length as the Ost front, the eastern front. The terrain of Norway was considered mostly mountainous and the country was dissected by fjords and valleys. Additionally it was noted that the infrastructure was widely dispersed and of limited capacity and could be easily interrupted due to bridges and tunnels. 
Nevertheless, in November 1943, a total of 380,000 men were located in Norway. 13 divisions were mostly assigned to coastal defense and an additional 3 divisions, including one panzer division, were assigned as a response force. Furthermore, about 1,000 artillery pieces of the caliber 10 cm upwards were used for coastal defense as well. Some of them were in turrets of scrapped German warships. Now the next one is Denmark. As mentioned earlier, Hitler considered Denmark as an unlikely target, yet one that would have the biggest consequences. The total length of the front was about 700 kilometers, which is about 435 miles. Although the various areas were mostly unsuited for landings due to either weather, long routes or very good defensive capabilities. Once a landing was successful, the countryside was considered very accessible to tanks. And for coastal defense, three divisions with limited combat value were assigned and in total about 106,000 men of all three branches of the Wehrmacht, the Army, Luftwaffe and Kriegsmarine were stationed there in November 1943. Now for the Netherlands, my data is actually more limited since the Germans in some cases summarized the Netherlands with France into the Western Front. Yet one noteworthy aspect is that parts of Netherlands were flooded already in early 1944. For instance, the areas of the 795th German Infantry Division in general, further floodings followed. Now for the western part of France and the Netherlands together, the frontage was about 2100 kilometers or 1300 miles. The coastlines, besides a few exceptions, allowed for amphibious landings. Additionally, the terrain of the countryside was generally considered suitable for all kinds of troops, including armored ones. He yeah, specifically referred there to the campaign against France in 1940, by the way. The following data is for November 1943. The number of guns above the caliber 7.5 cm was at almost 2,700. The number of constructed fortifications was about 8,500 and personnel of about 1.37 million men. It is although noted, but such a fortress belt also binds strong forces of its own. For this purpose, fortress divisions are used, of which only a small part, however, has an effect on the landing enemy. Now let's take a look at southern France. Length of the coast was about 500 kilometers or 310 miles here. This area was quite exposed since in September and October 1943, German forces evacuated from Sardinia and Corsica. As such, the operation staff assumed in February 1944 that an invasion there was likely. On February 17, the chief of the Wehrmacht's operation staff presented on the basis of detailed assessment of the Department Foreign Army west of February 16 in connection with the enemy situation that the next larger enemy operation was planned in the Western Mediterranean Sea, namely against the French Mediterranean coast, whose still small expansion must be known to the enemy. He cited as justification the readiness of the operational reserves in Africa, namely 18 to 21 divisions, 12 of them fully combat effective, the readiness of the heavy group of warships to be presumed in the Western Mediterranean and the mass of enemy landing craft capacity. Steadily progressing buildup of the air base at Corsica, which fighters covered the space up to both sides of Marseille. The air attacks of the last days against the cross connection Upper Italy, Southern France. Additionally, he added that an invasion near Marseille was likely, which would lead the Germans to move their mobile reserves there while at the same time the decisive invasion would be launched across the channel. This is particularly important because during D-Day the Germans for quite some time assumed that the actual invasion was a diversion and that the main invasion had not started yet. Now let's look at Italy. For Italy it was noted that some areas were mountainous, which allowed for reducing the number of troops there but noted that infantry was needed to prevent from enemy infiltrations. Additionally, the terrain allowed, similar to Norway, to easily interrupt roads. The front length was about 150 kilometers or 90 miles in November 1943 and the coastlines 1600 kilometers or 990 miles. Yet the total number of troops was only about 400,000 men, so less than one third of that which was located in France and the Netherlands. And at this point there was fighting in Italy going on. Now the last region was summarized as Südosten, Southeast, or the Balkan. The total coastal length, including the islands of Crete and Rhodos, was about 4,200 kilometers or 2,610 miles. 
It is noted that this is the double distance from Leningrad to the Black Sea, by the way, which is quite interesting. The main advantages for the defense was that the coast allowed to concentrate the defenses at port and deltas. Additionally, the mountainous area allowed for cutting off major roads as well. The total number of men in November 1943 was at about 612,000 men. Now, even in May 1944, Hitler was worried in case of an invasion in Northern Europe that the Allies might also attack in this region. Due to the proven presence of strong divisions in the Egyptian area, Führer is very concerned that Anglo-Saxons will start an invasion against the area of Rhodes, Crete and the Peloponnese in the course of an invasion. This area, especially the Peloponnese, is weakly protected. Yet, we are still not finished. Additionally, they also looked at neutral countries as well. For instance, they were discussing the eventuality that Portugal might get invaded or switch sides and that the Allies would march through Spain to attack occupied France. On January 7th, the Führer assessed the possibility of the Allies landing in Portugal as unlikely, as it would be associated with a high risk. The Führer demanded of the Luftwaffe that in the event of a handover of Portugal to the Allies without a fight, an air attack with strong forces would immediately flown against Lisbon in order to document that Germany was capable of such blows at any time. Now, in case Portugal would switch sides or would be invaded, the Germans also had some contingency plans for the situation and it was about blocking the Spanish border. It was called Case Nuremberg or Fall Nuremberg. And now, to summarize, as you can see if one looks at the German situation from fall 1943 to spring 1944, the discussion about Normandy versus Pas de Calais seems rather nitpicky or, well, unnecessary detail since there was literally far more ground to cover than just the northern coast of France. Of course, over time it became more and more apparent, but the Germans were also led astray by deception operations like Mincemeat and Barclay in 1943 when it came to the discussion if Italy, Sardinia or the Balkans would be the next target. Similarly, the Allies spent quite a lot of effort into the deception for D-Day as well. In fact, in the months before the the Allies dropped approximately twice as many bombs in the Pas de Calais area than in Normandy. As always, with hindsight everything is rather easy and obvious. Anyway, for a general discussion of World War II coastal defenses, be sure to check out my video with Drachenifel on that topic and if you're into naval history, be sure to check out his excellent channel. Thank you here to all my supporters, as always source the link in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching and see you next time.